Ladies and gentlemen, it uh, is a little past our starting time. If I could get you to take a seat or come on over where it's comfortable, we'll get going. I'm Neil Sampson, the Executive Vice President of the American Forestry Association, and it's my pleasure to welcome you here today to this Global Relief, uh, Washington Relief Press Conference. I must tell you that uh, I've done several of these around the country, and uh, you people have organized the most beautiful sight and the most beautiful weather of anybody, so I, uh, I congratulate you on all that. I'm sure uh, that that's been a combination of the uh, efforts of the City of Seattle and the State of Washington, has it not? We really appreciate it. Global Relief is a national, international conservation campaign that focuses on solutions. We started out last year as we kept hearing more and more people concerned about global environmental problems, and well, they should be. But we were concerned with the fact that global environmental problems were being portrayed once more as just too big for anybody to do anything about just so huge that governments and international organizations and major corporations were the only hope of doing anything positive. And we agree that government at all levels and corporations at all levels need to do things, but we think there's more to the story than that. We think there's a lot of opportunity for individuals. And so we designed a global relief campaign to focus on solutions that were people-sized and community-sized. And when people came to us and said, what can we do about all these things? We said, you could plant a tree. That won't cure the world, but it's a small positive step, and it lets you get involved in a very positive way with your own environment. And after you get done doing what you can do yourself for your own home and your own business, you can step out in your community and look at, at your streets and your parks and the things that your city government is struggling with, and you can provide the kind of citizen support that is essential for any of those programs to operate. And when you get done with that, you can look at your national constituencies and you can demand that national government, state governments, private sector, and so on do things. We opened this campaign up and immediately uh, people responded in a very positive way. There are state programs in operation now in all 50 states, uh, none quite as uh, ambitious as the Washington Relief Program that we'll talk about in a minute or none quite exactly like it, but something going on in all 50 states over thousands of communities now affecting millions of people. And the message has reached the top. For those of you who have watched the news, we've been floating a, 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 an urban forestry and forest improvement initiative up through the White House for about the last two and a half months. And this last week, much to our delight, the President of the United States took it on the road. And those of you who watched what he said in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and in Helena, Montana, and in Spokane, Washington, realized that the president himself is really committed to the idea of improving America's trees and forests as one way to show that we're in a leadership role in the world in environmental improvement. I think he realizes, like we all do, that you don't cure all your environmental problems that way, but at least you make some steps and you build some understanding. So that is uh, the Global Relief Campaign. It's a very substantive campaign. Our surveys indicate that there are 100 million trees, empty tree spaces that could be filled in America's communities, around homes and businesses. Add to that the street trees and park trees, you have a tremendous opportunity. The Lawrence Berkeley Laboratories estimate that planting those 100 million trees will save this country $4 billion a year in energy costs alone. So this is not insignificant effect. But to do that, you have to do it one at a time. You can't start out from Washington, D.C. trying to design a program to plant 100 million trees. What you start out with in each community is community groups, civic associations, local nonprofits, businesses, and others committed to improve their community. And you build on that with city government, city agencies, state government, and state agencies. And that's what's happened here today. So to get on with our program today, I'd like to first turn uh, to Jerry Clark, the city arborist for the city of Seattle, who's going to discuss what's going to happen here in Seattle and tell you a little bit more about it. Jerry? Thank you, Neil. 
As the city arborist for the city of Seattle as well as the engineering department, it's my pleasure and really a unique opportunity to be able to assist property owners in guiding them through the steps of planting trees, caring for trees, and maintaining trees for a long time. And really this is my goal as the arborist, to be able to, to encourage people to care for, to preserve, as well as to expand the urban forest, as we like to identify it, the urban forest within the city of Seattle. And that's why I'm really pleased and, and uh, excited about the fact that we have this program before us, which actually provide and uh, be a part of the three goals of which I have set out to accomplish as, as the city arborist. Those being education, incentive programs to encourage the planting of more trees, as well as active participants to find active participants to help subsidize the cost of planting trees. This program works very simply by just simply giving me a, a call. Upon giving me a call at 684-5042, I will in turn be sending out some information which provides uh, information on proper tree location, proper tree placement, and actually the proper tree to be planted within the planting strip areas. And I need to emphasize that this program is in fact a program for residential property owners and for those property owners to be planting trees within the street right away area. Upon sending this information then, as people give me a call back and we discuss what, is, what uh, tree they want to select as well as they want to locate that, I will then be issuing a certificate which uh, S Steve McGonigal will be talking about in just a little bit. But this certificate will then be uh, presented at, at select nurseries to be able to secure your and buy your trees. I like this program as well because it provides that incentive. It's an incentive which, um, which allows people the opportunity to go out and buy more trees. Uh, Neil had mentioned the fact that there's an opportunity of planting over a million, 100 million trees within the United States, within the city of Seattle alone. There's an opportunity to plant approximately 200,000 trees within our planting strip areas. We have actually an overall opportunity of planting 300,000 trees 100,000 trees have already been planted. So you can see that we have a long ways to go. We're only one third there. And so I'm really encouraged to participate in this global uh, relief warming program as well as the Washington relief program. And it's just, it's gonna be a really a pleasurable experience for me, I can assure you as the city arborist to be able to participate in this. I wanna now turn the microphone over to Steve McGonigal who is the executive director of the Washington Nursery Landscape Association. We'll explain to you a little bit more about the, uh, the way the coupon works as well as uh, trees. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. Well, by now we've learned that uh, more trees are needed on the globe in the United States and even in a city which calls itself the Emerald City. So if we're going to uh, maintain that reputation and the reputation as the evergreen state, we'd best get with the program, with the global relief program that is. Obviously a challenge of this magnitude, like uh, many other challenges in society today, is going to take a partnership of government, corporations, individuals, et cetera. If, I think even my friends in government would agree, if we wait for government to do it for us alone, it'll be a long time, if ever, uh, until the job gets done. The partnership already has that, that corporate uh, facet. The good folks from the Gallo Winery have joined hands with the member nurseries of the Washington State Nursery and Landscape Association. It's got the government facet. We've heard from the Seattle City Arborist. We'll hear from the State Department of Natural Resources very soon. And the nonprofit sector is on board in the form of the American Forestry Association. The missing component to that partnership uh, thus far is the individual citizen involvement that's so necessary if the program's going to go forward. And that's what we're here to seek today. This is the mechanism we hope to use to get individual citizens involved. It's a Washington Relief Certificate. Individuals which, who wish to plant trees will obtain these from Jerry Clark's office, the city arborist, and it will take them to uh, a list of 38 participating nurseries that he will also provide. When they select uh, an appropriate tree from the list, the partners I already mentioned on board through this certificate will in effect purchase half that tree for that individual. We know that this program we're introducing today will fill at least 500 of those empty planting spaces Jerry Clark referred to, and perhaps more. 
Beyond that goal, we certainly want to emphasize to people that planting a tree with or without uh, a certificate is simply the right thing to do. We're certainly going to welcome any uh, corporate citizens who want to come forward, as Gallo has, uh, and welcome them with open arms. So let's go out and relief Washington. Neil? Well, thank you, Steve. Uh, this is very appropriate. I would like to move now to, uh, to the state government, and we're pleased today to have Brian Boyle, the Washington State Commissioner of Public Lands, with us uh, across the country. Uh, Brian's work is gaining uh, national recognition because of the, the tough issues that he's tackling uh, uh, with forestry and handling very well. But today, I think we want to talk about urban forests. And Brian, it's a pleasure to welcome you here today. Thank you, Neil. <clears throat> and I want to thank the uh, American Forestry Association and Washington State Nursery Association and the city for making this policy this making this possible and but also particularly uh, Ernest and Julio Gallo wineries which I'll mention again later because it's really significant that you are here Don and others among your company the uh, three radio people left here a few minutes ago and uh, one of them said to me well why the Department of Natural Resources why this state agency that sells timber to finance schools. And I said, well, they don't call us the Department of, of State Agencies that sell timber to finance schools. They call us the Department of Natural Resources. And it has something to do with more than just money making. And historically, we've given small grants to cities in Washington State to help them develop forestry plans. Um, we've participated and awarded grants or, or uh, given awards for Tree City USA. Seattle is one of those cities that is a Tree City USA because of the efforts of Jerry Clark, the city arborist. And you only have to look around you from this perspective up to towards Queen Anne Hill to see why Seattle is awarded this Tree City award every year. Last year we developed a, uh, a model program, I think, with the Department of Transportation for the beginnings of planting some of those 15 million trees that we grow on state nurseries by the Department of Natural Resources to plant them on highway rights of way that are managed by the Department of Transportation. Now there's no reason why highway rights of way only have to grow scotch broom. They possibly can grow things that do some good for the environment. There's also no reason in cities why a street like Second Avenue has to be only be planted in small conifers that cause people to be afraid to walk down them because they believe that somebody might be hiding behind them. There are ways to plant avenues like Second Avenue so that they become promenades. They become parts of the beauty of urban spaces that, that are inviting to people and not fearsome to them. These are things that Jerry Clark